Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to Cinefix Now. Uh, Oscar nominations came out, and we're gonna talk about them. I'm gonna give you some hot takes. Hot take. Um, so, uh, let's just start with Best Picture, huh? Uh-huh, sure. Let's start with Best Picture. The Big part that most of us are gonna fast forward to exactly. anyway. Exactly. So, we got Big Short, we got Bridge of Spies, we got Brooklyn, we got Mad Max, we got The Martian, The Revenant, Room, and Spotlight. Mm. What do we think? about this field. It's a lot more interesting than what I'm used to, I have to say. I mean, you do have your fair share of Oscar movies in there. Um, you know, I feel like Spielberg, if he makes a movie, he's probably gonna be in there this year. Bridge of Spies! I have to say it like Arnold, I cannot. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I, oh, because the bridge is out. Yes. Yeah, gotcha. That's exactly right. But <laughs> Mad Max Fury Road was pretty much universally beloved, I would yeah. say, and it's not an Oscar movie at the same time, so it's kind of interesting to see the Academy kind of paying attention to what people actually like to watch. Well, that was the cool thing about Bad Max. They took your regular action film and they just spanked it into an Oscar movie, you know? <laughs> yeah. They spanked it into spanked an Oscar it right movie. right into an Oscar movie. It, it is, it's weird for me because I see what you're, what you say. there's some like interesting things in here. Um, I just, is, is there any way The Revenant doesn't win? I think that's, that's why I'm sort of disappointed in this category because I'm just assuming The Revenant is gonna win. And if that's the case, the, the movie was real divisive. A lot of people a lot of people loved it and a lot of people are like, meh. I'm actually seeing it this weekend so yeah. I can't even. Um, so, I mean, it's gorgeous to look at. Yeah. Right. Gorgeous it, to look at, a little hollow. Seems like Oscar catnip yeah. to mm. me. Yeah. Which, and. It usually works. Yeah. So, yeah, sometimes it works, but I gotta say, Spotlight I think is the, the biggest contender against. But I don't movies. know if Spotlight has the zazz, like the buzz of The Revenant. Like mm. Spotlight, I feel like everyone who saw it thought it was great, but I don't really think people have been talking about it all that yeah. much. It's nominated in a couple other categories, some of the actors, and I believe the screenplay. I don't know. It's got. I feel like that's the movie that doesn't win Best Picture, but wins almost the re almost all of the rest of the things that it's nominated for. Mm -hmm. it's, it's in that kind of category. Yeah, I could see that. What are your personal picks for Best Picture? As opposed I, to what you think will win. Look, I think it's gonna be The Revenant. Uh, I'm rooting for Mad Max. Uh, I think Mad Max and Spotlight were the only two movies on that list that stuck with me. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm gonna go for Spotlight, because I'm excited that Michael Keaton's back. Keaton is back. Keaton was back last year. Yeah. yeah. Well, true. Yeah, but now it's like, it's, it's, it's written in stone. He's yeah. back. My personal pick, I do still have to see a couple of these, I, I hate to say, but I think The Revenant is going to win just based on the buzz, like you guys were saying. My personal pick would be Spotlight. Okay, so moving on from that to, to Best Actor, Brian Cranston for Trumbo, Matt Damon for The Martian, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, of course, for The, the Revenant. Fassbender, nominated for Jobs, uh, and Eddie Redmayne again, of course, uh, nominated for The Danish Girl. Fassbender's great, but we've already forgotten about that movie. Mm -hmm. True. And Cranston, I actually totally saw him getting a nominee. I think I even said it in my review of Trumbo yeah. that, you know, there's just no way he's not going to get nominated. Matt Damon, I don't see it at all. DiCaprio, I don't see it ever happening for him. It, at this point, we're just... Because it's fun. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just a game we're all playing with Leo. I think so. Yeah. Just, him and Cooper, Bradley Cooper, right. I don't see it ever happening for them. I feel like the rest of the world is just like, you know what, you have enough already. I think, yeah. You don't get an you know, Oscar, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you if you weren't married to that European supermodel or whatever, maybe. But See, that's the thing. He's not even married. He rotates them like tires. Oh, man. is that what it is? Yeah. It's well, just forget like, it. That's even. Get to f all of the models. That's even and worse. Get an Oscar. Yeah. I honest, I feel like I don't see how Leonardo DiCaprio doesn't win this. Really? Yeah, because I think I think that you between think it's his time. I don't think Matt Damon is being seriously considered for The Martian. No. I don't think that. I, Trumbo, I'm sure Cranston was great, because Cranston's great, but Trumbo kind of came and went. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, Fassbender for Steve, I don't think- it, He's in the same boat as Cranston. Yeah. Like, came and went. Uh, so you might be right, Eddie, they're not Eddie gonna Redmayne, give it to Redmayne again. I don't think they're going to, because I think there's part of the Academy that's sitting there going like, God, I wish we knew he was gonna make this movie right. last year, and we wouldn't have given it to him totally. last year, so that we'd give it to him this year. I'm still salty he won last year, but yeah. I think, you know, just based on process of elimination, you might be right, DiCaprio might stand a better yeah. chance than he ever has. It it's like, prob yeah, it that, being, that being said, it's probably gonna be Fassbender for no reason. <laughs> 
It's like a wh Probably. whoopee cushion moment. It's, no, it's everybody's gonna like troll the category yeah. and be like, well, I just, I just wanna make sure he gets a few votes, but everybody does that. <laughs> Maybe he'll come in second. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, any, any other thoughts on, on actor? Yeah, I, think I mean, I did love Cranston and Trumbo, but... Mm. The writing maybe was a little... Yeah, yeah, I feel like on the whole, maybe the movie wasn't there there for me. Yeah. I think those... it was great, but not like Oscar great. There's a handful of those in every year. It's yeah. great great performances in the middle of subpart movies. Right. You yeah. know, so. And does a performance shine more when um, there isn't a whole lot of writing built around their character where they can... Where they have... They have more free range to make the movie more about their performance as opposed to using their performance to lift up good writing. Right. Whereas in Trumbo, the writing yeah. you know, is considered a little subpar. Mm -hmm. So maybe that ultimately dragged it down. And it's like, Leo, yeah, he did great Leo had with the that room bullshit. To, like, look at me and how good I am. <laughs> and breathe really yeah, heavy like, all it, the it time. It was all centered more around that. Yeah. So I do think this idea of staying power is important, though, because. If we're if we've already forgotten about a movie that came out three months ago, right. maybe it shouldn't win. Yeah. yeah. Um, so best supporting actor, we've got Christian Bale for Big Short, Mark Ruffalo for Spotlight, Mark Rylance for Bridge of Spies, Sylvester Stallone for Creed, and Tom Hardy for The Revenant. Um, I am I just I love the idea that Stallone is nominated for because he was great in the movie. I don't know if he was officially the best supporting actor of the year, but I f***ing love the story. I think so Hollywood am, is going to love the story, and I yeah, feel like he's going to win. I'm, I'm going to be legit upset if he doesn't. I see Stallone winning it. I do have some snubs here. Um, I think with The Big Short, you know, with an ensemble piece like that, anyone who's in it would have to be up for best supporting. No yeah. one's really able to be c considered for best actor. So it's one of them or none of them. Christian Bale was great, but I feel like Steve Carell was really great. I agree that he... I think he should be in this category uh, uh, over Christian Bale, mainly just because Christian Bale was like the one-man show in that mm -hmm. movie. He was very much isolated from everyone else in that story. And while he was great, I just didn't think he did a whole lot of supporting. Right. Uh, whereas Steve Carell... He's not the guy I remember him. in that movie. Right, yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. I also feel like Benicio Del Toro should have been nominated for Sicario. I was and wondering I'm, about I'm that. salty. Yeah. I'm like, um, excuse me. Because yeah. I, I noticed he also didn't get nominated for a Globe, and I was just like... Yeah. Which is strange, because that, that movie has had some of that staying power. Mm -hmm. Like, people are still talking about that movie. Yeah. Um, and it didn't get really nominated for anything. Nothing. Uh, which is strange because yeah. it got. I guess it's uh, subject matter wise, it's a real tough movie. Yeah, it's tough. But I feel like I every know. year there's one of those movies where it comes out and it's it's poised, you know, in terms of when it's released, perfectly for Oscar season, and everyone's talking about it, and then nothing happens. Yeah. Like somehow it just gets overlooked in every category. Whereas two weeks ago it was like Sicario, Sicario, yeah. Sicario. I don't know. I think, and, and it's it's hard for me to get worked up about snubs in this category because I just so desperately want to give it to Stallone sure. anyway mm -hmm. that I I don't care. I if if that's all we would have talked about today if Stallone was not nominated, is my my anger. Okay, so moving on to the actresses, best actress, um, we got Kate Blanchett for Carol, Brie Larson for Room, Jennifer Lawrence for Joy, uh, Charlotte Rampling for 45 years, and Saoirse Ronan for Brooklyn. I don't really know how to predict for this category because Jennifer Lawrence seems to be unable to do any wrong in Hollywood, but I also feel like it's enough already. That, that's the problem. Sort of in general that I have with some of the nominations this year is, and particularly with Inuritu and The Revenant getting nominated for f***ing everything, and then Jennifer Lawrence in another David O. Russell movie getting mm -hmm, nominated. Exactly. It's like, are, so are we just making a rule that when Inuritu makes a movie, it gets nominated for everything, and when J. La mm -hmm. and David O. Russell hook up, they get nominated? Is that just the rule? Because that's the frustrating thing that I'm not. I'm not really sure if we are in the midst of some genuinely like historically great talent that I'm just sort of tired of seeing? Yeah. <laughs> or are, are the voters getting lazy? It's hard to tell. Maybe a little bit of both. It's probably a little <laughs> bit of both. Because look, Jennifer Lawrence is great. She's good. She's very good. Of course, good. yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know. So supporting actress, then Jennifer Jason Leigh in The Hateful Eight, Rooney Mara in uh, Carol. I said that weird. Rooney Mara in Carol. Rachel McAdams in Spotlight, uh, Alicia Vikander in The Danish Girl, and Kate Winslet for Jobs, Steve Jobs. Jobs? Steve Yubs. Jobs. Alicia Vikander is spectacular. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that we have her now. Yes. <laughs> like after Ex Machina, she had a great year. Yeah. 
Speaking um, of snubs, I'm a little annoyed that Ex Machina was not yeah. Best Picture. We'll talk because about that. We'll was talk one about of my snubs favorites, here in a minute. Yeah. I mean, I've got a soft spot for for Alicia Vikander. Um, Me too. I, ha I honestly haven't seen a Danish girl, so I don't like. I'm just sort of rooting for her as a human. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Way, you know, Good. Good. so she needs supporters. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm going um, for Jennifer Jason Leigh. Are you really? Yeah, uh, because. That role in particular, it was such a linchpin to the movie. It was a very important supporting role. I think she knocked it out of the park. She did something that surprised me. And, mm -hmm. and um, I always put that above uh, an actress who's really good and does another really good performance. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? it's, it's weird how some people almost get punished for being consistently outstanding. Yeah. I know. It's yeah, it's like sick. we hold that against them. No, I feel gross Which is about like it. Jennifer Lawrence. Like Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> this is exactly. The situation it's we strange. Found ourselves in. It's yeah. like tough shit, Alejandro and Yuritu. Yeah. Like you do really amazing stuff every time you work, but I'm sick of it. <laughs> it's enough. Strange. What else we got? Director, best director. Um, Adam McKay. Yeah. Getting nominated for the Big Short. I think that's really fun. George mm -hmm. Miller for Mad Max. And like Yuritu, of course. Uh, Lenny Abramson. Abramson mm -hmm. uh, for Room and Tom McCarthy for Spotlight. Yeah. Um, an interesting. Uh, kind of variety of movies here. Much like the best picture category. Yeah. Honestly, I'm going to be happy with, with any of these. They're really strong. Winning. I think, I think Adam McKay them. winning an Academy Award would be exciting. Yeah, particularly because it was such a departure from everything we've right. seen him do before to do this movie, and I feel like he did it well. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I feel like he handled, you know, sort of a new genre in a really interesting way and still managed to infuse humor into it mm -hmm. very, very um, seamlessly. Yeah. Especially taking such a dry, complicated uh, subject matter. Yeah. And making it palatable. Yeah. And, and just playing around with breaking the fourth wall and great. stuff. Like, normally I hate shit like that, but I just think it was done really well. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what, I mean, because it's so rarely done well mm -hmm. that you sort of knee-jerk reaction is to hate, mm -hmm. you know. Like it, it all got, it, it took all of us a long time to get used to Kevin Spacey talking to us. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm still not used to it. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> it's a tough thing to do. So when somebody does it right, it's good yeah. to recognize Don't it. Look you know? at me, Spacey. Stop it, Spacey. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, look, I, I think Inurizu is going to win this. You think? Yeah. I think. I do. Oh. I really do. I just, I, The Revenant feels like this weird, unstoppable force at this point. Hmm. I think it's going to win everything. I um, and think. I, I that don't. perception now could be what does it in between now and Oscar night. Yeah. Because there's a lot of seasons where it'll be like, oh, it's this year's, it's this movie's year or whatever. And then people are just like, well, fuck that. I want to be contrary. Vote yeah. against it. So that kind of thing might be exactly what does it in. We'll yeah. see. I've never seen but I, this coming. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> as, as all the rest of the voters do the exact same thing. Yeah. Um, but I think it's pretty wide open. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if one of the directors from the smaller movies here um, get walk, you know, walk away with it. Because yeah. those movies are really well received and really critically Absolutely. acclaimed. So like, it wouldn't surprise me if one of them sneaks up and, and grabs it. Okay, so, uh, so obviously there's plenty more categories that we're not going to quite get into. Um, so let's go. What's, what's the biggest disappointment? In, in this field of I've snubs, got a few. disappointments? Uh, you know, I've, got, I've always got lots of disappointments. My <laughs> life is one big disappointment. Chock full of disappointments. Just ask my parents. But I would say in Best Picture, Ex Machina. Mm -hmm. Just because, I mean, I personally love that movie, but even objectively I can step back and say, actually that was easily one of the best movies yeah. of the year. It should have received a nomination. I know it was nominated for Best Original Screenplay, but that's not enough. That's honestly, that's my my biggest disappointment is the best uh, picture category in general. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like, I don't know, because you can have up to 10 nominations. They expanded the field a couple years ago. And everybody kind of knows there's the, like the other five that are now in are sort of like the, there's no real chance that they're going to win. But right. you know, like they're up there. So like I, I would like them, and they only nominated eight. Yeah. So there's two empty spots. And then Bridge of Spies, gets, which Bridge of Spies, like I'm sure it was good. I didn't see it. I'm sure it was good. No one saw it. But exactly, <laughs> exactly. It is. It is a 100% irrelevant film. Yeah. Um, like outside of apparently Mark Rylance. And then there's Room and Spotlight, which I, I appreciate are up there. But give give another throw X Mac in there. Throw mm -hmm. Tangerine yeah. in there. Like we know these movies aren't going to actually win Best Picture, but they're interesting movies that deserve some recognition. Mm -hmm. So it's like I've, if you're gonna expand the field, like go ahead and use it. You know? 
Well, another issue this year that happens pretty much every single year at the Oscars is just the whole whitewashing of the nominees. Mm. You know, pretty much no people of color nominated. I know Straight Outta Compton got a couple nominations, like for screenplay, I think. I think he just got the one. Yeah, screenplay. I think that might yeah. be it. But I would have loved to see Jason Mitchell nominated. He played Easy E because I went. To, I saw that movie twice actually because I went, you know, to see it for for us here to do a review, and then I went again in my real life. And I just think that actor brought a lot of gravitas mm. to the role, and he was really, really exceptional. Like yeah. I think his performance actually elevated that movie to be like, oh no, this is like a real movie. Right. This isn't like a biopic that got a, you know, a TV, you know, kind of movie of the week thing that got a theatrical release. So I would have loved to see him get a nomination, but it didn't happen. So looking at it from the other way, and, and building off of what we were talking about, straight out of Compton, like was one of the things that made me happiest about, aside from Stallone. <laughs> Aside from Stallone getting nominated, one of the things that made me happiest was the best original screenplay category because mm -hmm. it had Ex Machina and it's got Straight Outta yes. Compton. And there's like I, I feel like that's the category that I would like at least the lower half of the best picture category to look like. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I'm I'm really excited this about that yeah. particular category. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a bit of a consolation prize at least to be able to look into the writing category, which you know maybe the Academy doesn't feel like it's super important just based on how they lay out the telecast and even just mm. how they publish the nominations. But just as a viewer, I think it's kind of a nice sort of, eh, we didn't forget about you. Yeah, it feels, <laughs> it feels like it's one of those, it's like, no, look, everybody loved this movie, we agree, and here's, but, you know, we're going over here for f***ing Bridge of totally. Spies. <sighs> <laughs> we're going to get through this. We're going we're gonna to get through it. Uh, all right, guys, get down in the comments below. Let us know what you think about this year's Academy Award nominations. Uh, what are your biggest, biggest disappointments in the field this year? Let us know down in the comments below. Click like, subscribe, stick around Cinefix. Maybe we'll be in a stage next time. They're literally testing the lights right now. Oh, that's exciting. They're and testing the lights like in the stage. it smells like paint in there. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. real nice. Getting so close. It's a white psych, too, so we'll just be in the void. It'll be like we're about to gear up in the Matrix. Nice. It'll be real nice.